In the book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 11 and 12, we find these words. And do this, understanding the present time, the hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation, our home, heaven, is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. Why should we wake up? Because our salvation or our home or heaven, heaven is nearly now or is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. Church, listen to me. Heaven is just over the next hill. Heaven is just around the corner. You ever remember those long trips you used to take with your kids? They're famous words. Are we almost there? Are we almost there? Are we almost there? What do we respond by saying? They say, are we there yet? And we respond by saying, soon. Or just about. Or just over the next hill. Or if we get tired of hearing it, we say, don't you ask me that again. God, are we almost there? Is it almost time? And his response is, it's almost. You're almost there. It's just over the next hill. It's just around the next bend. You're living in the 11th hour. Heaven is coming soon. Church, are we ready? Are we ready? He says to wake up from our slumber. To wake up. The word salvation here encompasses many things. Uh, or, or not necessarily here, but the word salvation itself. When we talk about salvation, we talk about, uh, you know, are you saved? Have you been Born again, have you been regenerated, adopted into God's family, justified, forgiven? Those are terminologies we use for the word of salvation. But salvation also means finishing the course, making heaven your home. And that's what he's referring to here. Home, heaven. And he's saying that heaven is just about here, just about upon us. We need to talk and think about heaven. And heaven is important. Uh, we need to be challenged and we need to, to encourage uh, the aged believer that, that, that heaven's soon upon us. We need to talk about heaven to our young people so they realize that, you know, that there is life after death and there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And it's so important that we we share and we talk about, about heaven. And that's what I want to do today. I want to talk to you a little bit about heaven this morning. This knowledge of heaven or of our home can keep us in our struggle against evil. Listen, if we tell our young people that you have a heaven to gain and you have a hell to shun and they need to stay away from the evils of the world... When they are tempted, maybe they'll think about heaven and realize that, you know, there is life after death and I need to stay away from evil. We need to tell our people in the church that very truth as well. Every age needs to know that, hey, heaven is real and there is life after death and you need to clean up your act. You need to get ready, you need to get right for God and for heaven, for death. 
The second thing, this information of home can support us in our sorrow. The Word of God tells us that the rain falls upon the just and the unjust. And that means that in life, there are sorrows. In life, there are disappointments. And in case you haven't found out yet, good things happen or bad things happen to good people. And we don't always have the answer for those things. But it does. Why? Because it rains upon the just and the unjust. Life is full of sorrow. And why do you suppose that is? I think one of the reasons that is is so that, that we begin to hunger and we begin to long for heaven. Hey, if, if we never had a sorrow as a Christian, if we never had a sorrow in this life because we've given our life to God, would we really long for heaven? I don't think so. I don't think so. But I think because life has hardships and, and life has sorrows, we, we realize that, hey, you know, one of these days this is all going to be behind us. And we have a heaven to gain. And in heaven there is no sorrow. This insight of home can strengthen us in our conflict. It can strengthen us in our conflict. Not only is life, is life full of sorrow, but life has conflicts, and we know that. And there are many different types of conflicts. There's spousal conflicts. You know, we don't always see eye to eye with our, our, our partners, and, and sometimes there, there can be conflicts there. There are conflicts between employer and employee. There are conflicts between brothers and sisters and other family members. There are conflicts between neighbors. You know, and that list can go on and on and on of the conflicts that we face in life. And that's okay. Because that's life, isn't it? It's full of conflicts. But you know, when we begin to focus about heaven, and we begin to think of heaven, there are no conflicts in heaven. And that's great. But that's why we need to be talking about heaven. This revelation of home, of heaven, of our salvation can serve as a reliable test for our scale of values. You know, the values of the world are certainly different than the values of God's children. Our values are so much different. And the world can't understand. This past Wednesday night, we were talking about a little bit about these values and about, uh, you, you know, the world says, as long as it doesn't hurt anyone, it's okay. Why should you care as long as it doesn't hurt anyone? We all know that that's a wrong statement. Because it does hurt. They're telling our young people and teaching our young people about safe sex and saying, hey, it's okay. As long as two of you agree, it doesn't hurt anyone. We know that's not true. They don't tell you about the guilt that's associated with it. They don't tell you about the, the hurts that can come along with that, about the uncleanness that you feel. And on and on and on that list can go. And not only with sex, but with so many other things in life. Keep ourselves pure. We need to. We need to have right values. We need to have values that God wants us to have. And as we think of heaven, it helps us to keep focused on our values and, and the right values that we need to have. And that's important. Understanding our salvation or home in the future can give us focus for the struggles and the battles of life that we face today. You see, heaven is our hope. Heaven is our hope. The 
the major focus of home will be God. The major focus of home will be God. You know, the major focus will not be our mansion. Although it's going to be a beautiful place. That's going to be high class. It's going to be ritzy. It's going to be rich. It's going to be home. It's going to be great. It's wonderful. But that's not where the focus is. The focus is not going to be on the marriage supper of the Lamb. Although that's where you'll probably find most Wesleyans. Okay? Because we love to eat. But that's not where the focus is going to be. It's not going to be there. The focus is not going to be on the pearly gates or the the golden streets. That's not where the focus is going to be. It's not going to be on those loved ones who have passed on before us. That's not where the focus is going to be. I want you to understand that. That's going to be important. I believe we're going to be known as we were known. I was asked the other day, are we going to be able to know each other? Or am I going to be able to know my husband? Are my kids going to be able to know their dad? And I said, absolutely, I believe that with all of my heart. We're going to know each other. But the focus is not going to be on those things. The mansion's going to be great. The marriage supper of the Lamb's going to be awesome. The streets of gold, the pearly gates. The beauty of of heaven is going to be great and awesome and wonderful. Meeting loved ones who have gone on before will be great and wonderful. And all the glories that come along with heaven, it's all going to be great and wonderful. But that's not what the main focus is going to be. And you might ask, well, Pastor, what is the main focus? That's easy. The main focus is God. The main focus is God. I have been very privileged in my life to sense the presence of God in some awesome ways. I've been in church services where God's presence was so real and the, the preacher didn't even have to preach. God came, and, and it, was, it was an awesome experience. And if you've been in some of those services, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I've been in services where, where people shouted and, and people wept, and, and it, it was emotional. And, and I'm not talking about, it, it's not about emotions. But God's presence was so real. I have had times in my own personal devotions where, where God just came and, and, and his presence was just so real I was, I was almost afraid to move. God's presence. And I'll tell you, there is absolutely nothing like it. And friends, that's going to be the focus of heaven. It's going to be the focus of heaven. Now, if you feel uncomfortable with that, maybe there's something wrong. Now, I do not believe that heaven is going to be one long church service. Thank goodness for that, right? I understand where you're coming from. I understand. Absolutely, that's the biggest response I got out of you too, okay, just, just so you know, all right? But it's not going to be one big, huge church service, but it is going to be all about the presence of God, and it's going to be wonderful, amazing. Words cannot describe. You know, as people of God, we need to be hungering, and we need to be thirsting, for more and more of God. Let's look at what home will be free of. 
what home will be free of. Revelations chapter 21 gives us uh, <clears throat> chapter 21 and, and some of chapter <clears throat> excuse me, 22 gives us a focus of what heaven is going to be like. And we, we see that, that through these scriptures we will be free from sin. Imagine a place where there is no sin. We can't imagine what that will be like. We've, le- we've lived among sin all of our lives. Many have dealt with that. Most of us, all of us have dealt with that carnal nature within our lives. Some of us have taken care of that issue. But some are still living with that issue. But sin is everywhere. Sin is around us. We can't read a newspaper without reading about sin. We can't turn on the TV and watch the news without hearing about sin. Anymore, we can't even hardly watch a TV program without hearing, seeing sin. It's all around us. Our neighbors live in sin. Many of our relatives live in sin. It's all around us. But imagine a place where there is no sin. Won't that be awesome? We will be free from tears of sorrow. Free from tears of sorrow. Imagine never again having a tear of sorrow. What will that be like? No disappointments. No sorrow to speak of. What a place that's going to be. We will be free from pain. Some of you constantly live in pain today. Arthritis. Your bones ache. Someone told me this morning they, they just couldn't, they couldn't move this morning. When they, when they woke up, they had such pain in their back. Yesterday, they couldn't walk. And I've seen them wobble into church today and no doubt they're they're hurting right now as they're they're sitting in the pew some of you dealing with back pain and and uh all kinds of pain that people have in heaven there is no pain it will be free from death and dying imagine we'll never die we'll never see anything die there will be no death in heaven how wonderful that will be we will be free from separation from those we love there'll be no loneliness in heaven John says there was no longer any sea in the context of what John is is saying here you must understand He was banished to the isles of Patmos and there was water all around this island where he was. And he was lonely. He was lonely. And he's writing about heaven. And he's saying that in heaven there'll be no loneliness. There'll be no sea. And sea was what separated him from his loved ones. So there'll be no sea. There will be no separation. And we will be free from the boredom of idleness. We will be free from the boredom of idleness. Boy, do you ever get bored? (coughs) Being idle? Sometimes these winter winter months can get very long, these winter days. You know, it gets light early and it's too cold to get out and you don't feel like doing anything and sometimes you feel like the four walls are, are closing in on you heaven in heaven there'll be no idleness there'll be no boredom there's going to be plenty to do I was reading this morning again in the book of revelations about heaven and 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 I I I read that, that there were gates on each side on each side of the city of God think about it for a moment 
What are the gates? Why are there gates? I believe we're going to travel. And I, I have no proof of this, but, but I believe we're going to have opportunities to travel, to see things, things that we've never seen or imagined before. This universe, as we know it, there are many universes out there. There are many worlds out there, many planets, stars. I believe that God created all of it. The only thing I don't know is why he did that. But I know that God never makes a mistake. And I know God just doesn't do things to do things. Therefore, I have to come to the conclusion that God created them for us. There's a reason, a purpose. I don't know what that is. But I believe, or at least want to think, that we're going to be able to travel. We're going to be able to go to certain planets and see certain things. Won't that be awesome? We can't imagine what God has in store for us. Last of all, we will be free from fear of the night. We will be free from fear of the night. We read that the gates will always be open. The gates won't be closed. We read that there won't be no night there. Why won't the gates be closed? Because there is no fear. What do you have to be afraid of? There is no fear. There is no night there. God is the light. God is the light. Imagine a life without fear, without worry, without concern. Many of you have lost sleepless nights because worried, concerned about this situation or that situation. In heaven, there's no fear. There's no worry. There's no concern. Heaven is an awesome place. I don't know about you, but I'm going to do everything in my power to make heaven my home. Everything in my power. I'm going to live a holy life. I'm going to live a pure life. I'm going to try to serve God with all of my heart, mind, soul, and strength. I'm going to love Him and I'm going to do what it takes to serve Him. Why? Because I want to make heaven my home. I don't want to miss it. Because as great as heaven is going to be, as awesome as heaven is going to be, the alternative is a whole lot worse. It's a whole lot worse. So we need to ask, are you ready for heaven? Are you ready? It's going to be here before we know it. Life is so short, isn't it? Life is so short, and none of us know whether we'll see another tomorrow. And I don't say that to be gloom and doom, but that's reality. God could come today. God could come at any moment and take us home. Are you ready? Are you ready? Will you stand with me? Eternal Father, as we close in prayer this morning, you know the heart of your people. You know all about us on our journey. You know our uprisings and our downsettings. You know those things that we try to hide in the closet and we don't want anybody to know about. You know all about those secret sins that we, com we commit. Lord, we cannot hide from you. Lord, you know the hearts of your people. And I want to pray for those that may be here today that aren't living as close to you as what they ought to be. Oh, they're, they're good people, but they're, they're not holy people. They're good people, but they're not pure people. 
And Lord, you tell us you want a pure people. You want a holy people. You want a righteous people. And the only way that that can be, happen is if we're washed in the blood of the Lamb. And Father, I pray that you will search our hearts this morning. I pray that you would allow the Spirit of God to speak to us and to draw us close to you. Put your finger directly on the issues of our lives, those things that are ungodly, those things that are unwholesome, those sins that we have kept in our closets. Lord, put your finger directly on them. Show us our hearts as you see us and help us to do something about it. Father, go with us now as we go our separate ways. Bring us back again safely this evening. Grant unto us a good week. And for all that you do, we'll give you the praise. Amen. You are dismissed. May God bless you.